guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video I'm super excited for. I told you guys I was going to do this in my Historical Romance Readathon announcement. It is my favorite historical romances I've read so far this year. It is June. Typically, I wait until the end of June to do videos like this, but because the readathon's at the end of June, I wanted to do this one now. I'll do my regular romance favorites of 2021 so far at the end of the month, but I have cut it down to 16. I had 18, and I was like, that's too many. I was including almost all the books that I've read because I've loved so so many historical romances that I've read so far this year and in the beginning of the year I was literally only reading historical romances all the time all day every day and so I've kind of like slowed down on that reading but now that the readathon's coming up I'm like give me all the historical romances but I'm gonna go in order of how I read them and I feel like some of these I thought I read last year especially the first one I'm gonna talk about because I loved it so much and I've talked about it in so many different videos I've only read it five months ago, but I thought I read it last year, so I have a lot to get to. I noticed all the spines in my thumbnail were blue but one, so apparently it's a blue book video, but I will go ahead and get to all my favorite historical romances so far this year. The first one is The Ray Cast by Scarlet Peckham. I had no idea I only read this this year. This one blew me away. I think I read it in the video where I was reading Booktuber's favorite books of 2020, possibly. I know some of my friends love this, some of my friends really didn't love this. I loved it. Our heroine is a Ray Kess. She is someone who enjoys pleasure and having intimacy with men and she isn't afraid to do that in society and now this is historical so it was extremely looked down upon. She is judged and berated by society all the time and so she's writing a kind of tell-all memoir about what happened because even the men she's been with don't face any scrutiny though she does and they're doing the same thing they're in a relationship that is physical without being married but of course she's a woman during that time period she falls in love with a man who is a widow and he is a single father I believe his wife died in childbirth so make sure you are aware of that before reading this book but I loved our hero I loved our heroine I loved the entire story I loved everything about it I'm actually gonna be doing a reading vlog where a different book by Scarlett Peckham is in it because I want to know if I love her as much as I love this book so one of my favorite historical romances really of all time and I read it this year but mm, I cannot wait for book two it was supposed to come out this month or last month and there's literally no cover no synopsis nothing so I don't know when book two is supposed to come out hopefully sometime I don't know I want it now then I have A Gentleman Never Keeps Score by Kat Sebastian this one I talked about a lot when I read it as well I don't know if this one I read during the historical romance readathon back at the very beginning of the year but we have our one of our heroes breaks into the other hero's house and the one hero hasn't left his house in a very long time because of a scandal that happened and now he really doesn't want to go out in public anymore and so our hero breaking into his house is breaking into it to get something back and it is a explicit painting of one of his friends he decided to get it for her he owns the tavern I think in the town and so he ends up catching him and they end up starting talking and it's their relationship and it is so adorable I really 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 enjoyed this one and there's really not much else I can say I don't want to spoil too much about the plot but they end up hanging out together and of course the one guy is just still traumatized by what happened to him in society so he doesn't really want to have a relationship and he still doesn't really talk to his family as much and there's kind of a mending of relationships there throughout the book and I really enjoyed this I really am excited to read more from Kat Sebastian I read a few of her books but I have a lot more to catch up on of course we have Beverly Jenkins on here. I have two Beverly Jenkins books. I think they're the only two Beverly Jenkins books I've read this year, I think. And the first one's Night Song. I love this. I just filmed my favorite romance standalones video and this was in it. I really, really enjoy this. Our heroine watches someone that she loves and is part of her family get taken and lynched by soldiers, so she never trusts soldiers. But there is a, like, kind of hotshot soldier in town and that's our hero. She is a teacher and so she's just seen talking to him and everybody, like, starts whispering and, like, she's gonna ruin her reputation because she's a teacher and he is really really smitten with her and there is a nursing back to health scene and something happens where you are kind of question him as a hero like should you be doing that she didn't actually consent to something that he chooses for her but um 
I didn't really mind it. I wish like he had waited for her to like be lucid to be able to say she agreed to something or not. Not physical, but something in this book. But I thought it was just such a great romance and he really doesn't want a family or anything and because he moves around so much because he's part of the military, but it was super sweet and adorable. I love Beverly Jenkins, so this one was a great one. Then we have The Sum of All Kisses by Julia Quinn. I almost put the second book on here, but I didn't love it as much as this one, so I'm only putting this one. This is book three and our hero, he is the one who got shot in the duel that was talked about in the first book it's the best friend of the guy in the duel the second book it's one of the guys in the duel the third book it's the other guy in the duel and he is the one who got shot in the leg so he has a limp and he feels just not adequate enough and he hates the fact that he is incapacitated in that way especially when it comes to taking care of our heroine so it's really sad some of those scenes but our heroine detests him because she blames him for something even though it's not really his fault she blames him for something that happened and so she hates him but then she is is put in charge of like watching him during the wedding of one of the previous couples and so she ends up be, like agreeing to just like be in charge of him during the wedding and they start falling for each other and there's a really hilarious carriage ride in here because it is during the wedding and they have to like go somewhere for the wedding I don't remember where they're going but it's so funny and I loved her sisters in here and it was just so good super angsty because she doesn't want to fall for him because she hates him for some reason and he is just like angry because he is injured and he'll never have full capacity of his leg again but I really love this. I love this series. I have not read book four though because I've heard book four is absolutely awful. It has really really bad reviews but the first three are so good and I feel like annoyed having an unfinished series but like do I waste my time reading it if I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna like it? I don't know but first three are great. This one's my favorite of the series though. I have another favorite that I talk about all the time and that is The Duchess War by Courtney Milan. This one our heroine she is betrothed to someone but she hates attention and a duke sees her. Our, our hero sees her and she was like uh I don't want attention like what's happening and he's so intrigued. He's like who is this? Why is she hiding? Like what's going on? But she's hiding from her betrothed and then something happens where there is this like all the workers in like the factories and stuff are being encouraged to go on strike and like ask for better wages better what is the word better conditions and people think that is her because she's hiding something and so she is determined to figure out who it is and then her and the dukes are spending time together and this was amazing she does have PTSD from something that happened to her so she really hates having attention on her in large crowds so there are a few scenes in here for that and I just loved how smitten he was with her by the end oh my gosh I love a smitten hero this one has it this one was so so good a lot of people don't like this book I loved it I wasn't a fan of her other historical I read which was the Duke who didn't right yes I wasn't a fan of the Duke who didn't absolutely love this I cannot wait for the next book I already have books two and three on my shelves because I just like need them and so I'll probably read the second one during the historical romance readathon but I really really love this and then we have another one of my favorites of all time and that is If the Duke Demands by Anna Harrington. Our heroine, she grew up like on a farm next to a duke and his family and so she grew up with them but she is not of high society and she is in love with the duke's brother and she decides she is going to seduce him and gets the wrong room and they are in masks it was a masquerade and so they do end up sharing a kiss and then he realizes who it is and she realizes who it is and she's like oh my gosh what just happened and he needs a wife because he's a duke something had happened when his father died and so he is very serious about being a duke now and has really changed as a person and so he asks for her help to find a wife and if she does that he will help her get his brother and um it's a romance between them i love the trope i might do a video because lisa reminded me that this was a trope she's gonna do it so I might wait until she does it from a Mark Lee Lisa one of my BFFs she has a channel that's amazing she talks a lot about historical romances but it is the trope where like we weren't supposed to fall for each other it's like they're helping each other get other people together but they end up falling for each other in the process I love that trope and I feel like it's a lot in historical romances but I absolutely love this one of my favorite historicals of all time I read it because of Lisa and I really want to try more from this author the next one I have is Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks I talk about this one all the time our heroine is deaf and she lost her hearing and everybody thinks that she is now like simple-minded but really she just doesn't want a lot of attention on her because of what happened and she can read lips she is very smart and 
something happens where she has to marry the Laird of the rival clan and it's Scottish and so she ends up going there and he is super protective of her his clan hates her because she is from the rival clan but she ends up getting becoming friends with his sister and then they start talking to each other her and her betrothed and they grow really close and it's just so sweet I love how protective he was I love how headstrong and smart she was and she was determined to show the people that she was a good person and she cared about them so I love this okay sorry if things just shifted my my SD card got full so I had to delete some things that I didn't need anymore but I miss my Banks's historical romances like the Scottish ones I wish we had more and the last one in the series uh, of one of the series of her Scottish romances has been pushed back forever because my Banks has had some health issues I think all of her series have been pushed back like years and years and years so hopefully she gets better and can start writing again the next one is actually purple so I feel like it's a lot of purples and blues it's my darling Duke by Stacey Reed I forgot to grab it it's all the way up there this one another one of my favorite historical romances of all time our heroine she needs to get a husband who is of high status so that she can get husbands for her sisters and they can have good marriages and so she decides to put a fake announcement in the paper that she is engaged to a duke who has been a recluse he has not been seen in years because he wasn't a fire and he is badly scarred and so he doesn't want to deal with society he just lives with his sister who he loves which is a really cute relationship I think I believe that's what this one is this is a very common trope I've read this a couple times in historicals so I kind of get things mixed up but in this one she has the announcement in the paper and then like his solicitors come by and give her money and everybody thinks it's true he hears about it and he's very intrigued so he comes back into society to see her at a ball and they dance and he's like I'll agree to this farce if you come to my estate in Scotland with me for like a week and so she agrees there's the only one bed stuck in the cabin trope I love the stuck in a cabin trope like it's obvious they're gonna be ruined because they're alone in the middle of the woods in a cabin together but they don't have any other like way out they like need to stay the night somewhere and it's fabulous I love this so so much I loved how he just felt like he wasn't good enough for her and she's like no you are and it was fabulous I love this and I cannot wait to read the second book in the series speaking of a one bed in a cabin trope Devil's Bride by Stephanie Lawrence was so good I read this and I just loved it so much he is the touch her and I'll kill you hero he is the I'm smitten and I'm you're gonna be mine hero and so in the beginning our heroine is a governess and she stumbles across a body and she's like oh my gosh he's not dead yet but he's been shot and he says that he wants our hero and so devil and she ends up getting him and they or he finds her I don't remember how but they find him and her and devil and this dead body who he ends up dying uh, have to spend the night in the cabin together because it's like at night I think it's storming and so she's like oh my gosh my reputation is gonna be ruined people are gonna hear about this and he is like I want you like you are perfection and I want you to be my wife and the story goes from there they're trying to find out who had killed him and what he had seen why he needed to see devil and it was so fun I love the ending scene I really just enjoy this book it is just your just great historical romance with a really great hero and heroine and I really enjoyed reading it then we have Beguiling the Beauty by Sherry Thomas I'm excited to read more about this series and from this author this one was so unique our hero is into fossils so is our heroine and he was giving this talk and America and he is madly in love with her heroine like the minute he saw her he really liked her but she has been married twice now and both of her husbands died and so he says something really bad about her and she is super offended and she decides to disguise herself and she goes on the same like ship that he is going back to to England and she pretends to be like this German baroness and has like a veil over her head the whole time and they end up spending a lot of time together starting a physical relationship he still has never seen her face and they fall for each other but she was trying to seduce him to get back at him but falls for him and it's so good I really enjoyed it and then she leaves him and he's like what happened and she's all torn up about it and I just love that I love that trope I haven't read that really a lot uh, the whole like I'm gonna make you fall for me out of revenge but we like fall for each other instead I really enjoyed this one another one I absolutely loved was mine till midnight by Lisa Kleypas this one was so good if you like the Bridgertons you like the whole family dynamic I think you'll love this our heroine has her family that she is really protective of and they live together there is her brother gets a title and I don't remember what title it was but like nobody has been wanting this title and like everybody keeps on dying off so the brother gets it he is very still 
grieving over something that happened and so he's a drunk she's trying to find him she finds him in this bar that she's not supposed to be at and our hero owns that bar and he is Romani and so I think that they use the G word in here but the audiobook I listened to had changed it but they instantly are like super drawn to each other when they first meet and she's trying to find her brother and then they go to their estate that they inherited and it's like really awful crumbling down I think there's a B scene in here too that was terrifying but he ends up the hero ends up being at the neighborhood estate as well and they just can't get away from each other and he's very protective and helps save her out of some situations and it was just great there was just undeniable chemistry between them I loved it and I cannot wait to read the second book because the second book sounds absolutely amazing I cannot wait, so I'm excited to continue on with the series. Then we have The Footman and I by Valerie Bowman. I definitely read this because of Lisa from Remarkably Lisa. Our hero, he is a duke or some titled person, and he's tired of people wanting him for his money because something bad happened in a relationship before. And so he and his friends decide to dress up as servants and bet each other that like they won't be able to like find someone for them. And so our heroine, she is entering society and her mom wants her to marry this really old, awful guy, and she doesn't want to. And she catches the notice of the footman and they start growing closer and she's like really liking him and he is now in the conundrum where he's like um I really like her but she thinks I'm a footman and I'm lying to her and she's gonna hate me like what do I do and so I really enjoyed the dynamics in this book I loved how kind she was she never looked down upon them there's something that happened that was his fault but she like apologized for what had happened and it was super cute the next one is A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare this one is a historical romance this is book four in the series Series. No, this one's book two, and then I have book four in a little bit. But this one's book two in the series, and this one, our heroine, she sees that this duke need. I think he's a duke. He needs money, and he's kind of eyeing her sister. And she's like, "No, you cannot ruin my sister. You're gonna marry me." And she has a fascination with fossils, and she belongs to like scientific groups and stuff. And so she wants to go to this big like conference in Scotland so she can show her findings. So she found a fossil, and he. She's like, "If I will like marry you if you take me to Scotland." He initially agrees, and then he tries to get out of it, and then. And he's like roped into it. He did lose his family in a tragic carriage accident, like a coach accident, and so he can't ride in those anymore because he was there when it happened, and so they have to take all these different kind of ways, modes of transportation, and it is hilarious. I laughed out loud so many times reading this audiobook, and I loved their romance, how things ended. Just if you like a trip travel romance, you have to pick this up. Then the second Beverly Jenkins is Winds of the Storm. This is a spy romance. Our heroine is a spy and she helps rescue our hero in the very beginning in the prologue and now she is posing as a madam and there are some definitely interesting scenes in here because she's basically working for a, at a brothel, right? And she, her and her women are trying to find secrets. There's supposedly this list of people that the white supremacists are trying to kill off and so they're trying to figure out things about this list and things about the people in the town. That's why the women are being like women of the night and trying to seduce the men and get information out of them and she's not doing any of that she is just like the madam in charge of them and our hero who was rescued by her he is in town and he's super intrigued by her and she does wear I believe a veil over her face so like people don't know what she looks like because she's kind of notorious and they end up falling for each other but she's like there's no way I could ever be in a relationship with really anyone especially him and I really enjoyed this one I like spy romances I love Beverly Jenkins I love everything she puts into her novels so I would recommend picking this up. Then I read Then Came You by Lisa Kleypas. This one is Lily and Alex and it's so funny. So Lily is someone who doesn't care about society's rules. She does what she wants. Literally the, the beginning of the book she like jumps off of a boat into the Thames to get her hat and like people are like who is this this lady? And Alex hates her. He hates everything she stands for. He hates that she doesn't follow any rules. He is betrothed to her sister. Now both Alex and Lily have been hurt in the past and so they are kind of jaded towards romance and love and Alex is like I just want a wife who'll be a good wife to me and so they have to spend time together because like people always like go out of the country and like spend months at different estates and so they're spending time together and it's their romance and it's so good I really liked it Alex falls first and I love a hero who falls first I just ate this up we read it for the historical Hellions book club I think we also read night song for that and none of the other ones but this one was just so so good and Derek Craven is in the beginning of this he has really close friends with Lily so I'm excited to read his book and dreaming of you because I know he's everyone's favorite and then 
And the last one I didn't even realize I owned in paperback because I listened to the audiobook. That's Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. This is book four in the series, the Spindle Cove series. And this one, our hero's a duke, and he was he experienced something in the past, and he is very hurt by it. It is loss of someone. And so he hasn't told anybody, though. And so his mother is like, you need to get your act together. She doesn't know why he's acting this way. So she pretty much kidnaps him and takes him to Spindle Cove, and is like, you're going to pick someone to be your wife. And that's just what it's gonna be. And so he chooses the barmaid, and the barmaid is our heroine. And he is like, I choose her. And his mom was like, Okay, we'll take her, and I'm gonna make her a duchess. And he makes a deal with the heroine. He's like, If you can put up with my mom for a week, fail miserably, I'll give you money, and she can take care of her sister because her parents are awful, and she is really close with her sister, and she wants to take care of her. So she agrees, and she tries to fail miserably with the mom, ends up falling for him instead. And it's really interesting because she kind of has this like personality where she doesn't care what people think, but she doesn't like people judging her. And she does have to enter society and they make fun of how she talks and she can't dance and she has to learn how to be a duchess. And it's amazing. She also has to kind of push our hero to confront what happened to him and get help from his family and I loved that. It was so good. I love this one. I'm just so happy that it ended on a high note because well I guess book five is like technically in this series and the Castles Never After series and I loved book five too but I read that first before any of these other ones but I'm just happy as the last book I read in the series I really enjoyed it. And those are my favorite historical romances that I have read so far this year. Let me know if you've read any of these and if you enjoyed them and what your favorites of the year so far are and I would love to hear if you're participating in our readathon. I cannot wait. But that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.